So border gateway protocol, border gateway protocol, PGP. One of the protocol which is widely spoken, widely in use, especially in service provider. You cannot see any service provider without BGP. Small or big, BGP is always there in service provider network. No service provider you can see on earth without BGP. <coughs> Even if it's a small ISP, they will definitely have BGP. Such an important protocol is this BGP, Border Gateway Protocol, concepts and terminologies. The reason behind this one between the autonomous systems, between the borders, is the way that it is constructed. <coughs> BGP. Sorry, Chris, uh, the screen is not shared. And the way that it is designed to support route distribution matches the route distribution between the borders. If you take between the borders, between the autonomous system borders, we have some policies while selecting a path while routing a packet, we have some we have some policy in path selection. This BGP is is designed very well to support such policy based packet forwarding, policy based path selection in path in packet forwarding. policy based can i achieve the same thing with ospf uh, not really to an extent with a lot of limitations you can use ospf between borders bgp is the best so there is no other protocol as a replacement for BGP, well structured till date, meets all the requirements that you have between the borders. That's why this is always seen in service provider network. <coughs> Especially if an enterprises connects to more than one ISP, even in the enterprises, you need BGP. So BGP is not only between the service provider networks, it can be seen even between the service provider and the enterprises. You see, there is an example here. The 65500 autonomous system is BGP's autonomous system number. An enterprise is running BGP on router A and B, learning routes from two different ISPs. And ISPs are connected to customers. Customers of whom? The enterprises. So these enterprises can be another ISP also. For ISPs, the other ISPs are customers. So BGP is not only seen in enterprises, it is also seen in enterprises, not only in ISP, it is also seen in enterprises, especially when they are dual homed, sorry, not dual home, multi homed, not only multi homed, even in dual home scenario, we use BGP. So this enterprises is multi homed what does that mean you got more than one connection to the isp <coughs> so whenever we have more than one connection to isp we will have policies policy in talking to isp a and policy in talking to isp b may not be the same so depending on the policy the route distribution 
is going to happen. So according to the policy, we can tune BGP in between these and in between this to achieve the policy in path selection and in drought distribution. Whereas the protocols like uh, OSPF, ISIS are not that flexible to meet our needs. So whenever you've got multi-home scenario, we will definitely have some policy like with ISPA, I want to have like all the important traffic will use ISPA. Other traffic should go via ISPB. This is a policy. This is a policy depending on the destination, I choose my gateway. With BGP, this is very easy to achieve. That's why we go for BGP between autonomous systems. Multi-homing is always providing you high availability and redundancy. For example, if I want to use ISP as primary ISP, where ISPB will be idle, standby. And if ISPA goes bad, the standby will become active. This is one policy. The other policy is, as I said earlier, all the important traffic should go via ISPA and the other traffic should go via ISPB. This is load sharing. So load sharing is possible, redundancy is possible. ISPB is in standby, providing high availability. The enterprises will always have connection to a customer. You will not lose connectivity. So, multi-homing is good. See, this is another two reason why you need multi-homing. Reliability. If one ISP fails, means the connection to one ISP fails, you will still have access to the internet. The enterprises will still have connection to customers via another ISP. Not only this is enterprises, you know, this can be even another ISP. See, if you are an ISP, will you have only one upstream ISP? No. Your customers, let's say you have 1,000 customers, just 1,000. And if you have only one ISP on the top, what will happen? If connection to that ISP fails, then 1,000 customers you have to answer. So as ISP, you need to have another upstream, another one or two or three more ISPs so that your thousand customers will be happy. So you cannot answer a thousand people. You know. <clears throat> so multi-homing is not only for enterprises. More than enterprises, for ISPs, multi-homing is very important. I have not, I have not seen any ISPs having just one connection to an upstream ISP. I have seen like minimum four, minimum four upstream ISPs. So that the customers down there will be happy. Performance. As I said earlier, you can do load sharing. Connection to some destination may be 
cheaper this way compared to the other one. And for some other customers, for some other destination, this may be cheaper. So the performance can be improved. And I say cheaper it depends on the bandwidth, let's say cost to reach or number of hops, AS jumps, cheaper, early, fast delivery. Everyone likes early arrival, right? Okay, now there are three different ways in which we learned routes from our multi-home ISP. One, learning default routes only. This is enterprises scenario. Enterprises having multiple connections to different ISPs. So they, they, they mostly, you know, receive a default route from both ISPs. And you will have some weightage to some ISP here. According to the weightage, this may be preferred and this will be the six standby. Or this may be preferred, this may be the standby. So learning default route is one way. Second way is learning partial route. Meaning for some well-known destinations, you allow the routes to come in. Say for example, 10,000 prefixes learned from ISP A and ISP B. Only 10,000 prefixes, you have clear route, very precise route in the routing table. For the rest, you're going to use default route. So the yellow line is default route. You have reachability to the entire world, but for few destinations, you have very clear route. When you have clear route with proper metric, you can take fine tune path selection. The third is the ISP scenario. This is not enterprises. This is another ISP. So you learn the complete route from the routing table of the upstream ISPs so that you can compare which one is better for the destination. For some destination, you'll have better hop count, better metric via ISP A. For the other, it may be via ISP B. So you can take a very clever path selection when we have multiple path options. So learning complete routing table from ISPs or another way. And mostly ISPs prefers this. Now, what is an autonomous system? BGP works between autonomous system. What is an autonomous system? As it is written here, autonomous system is a collection of networks that are running on various routing devices, which are under single technical administration, single group of people, single group of people who have got same policy in governing the network. Single technical administration. In another word, collection of networks that are running on a router, on, a, on, on not a router, running on routing devices that are managed by a, a company, one company, one ISP, or one enterprises. All those devices and network belong to that one network. That one network engineer only controls all of them. Now, what is the difference between IGP and BGP? IGP, Interior Gateway Protocol, BGP, Border Gateway Protocol. IGP example, OSPF, ISIS, RIP, EIGRP. 
BGP, there is only one. That's BGP itself. IGP designed to fit inside autonomous system. IGP is compared to BGP, IGPs are not that big scalable. BGP is highly scalable than any other protocol. Even OSPF is little lower than BGP when it compares to scalability. So in short, IGPs are the routing protocol that operates within the autonomous system. Whereas BGPs are the routing protocol that operates in between the autonomous system. Now, every protocol has got some sort of loop prevention mechanism. BGP also have got loop prevention mechanism. Let's take from the beginning like RIP uses the default split horizon rule as well as the max hop 15 to prevent loop. OSPF, ISIS, they use their router ID or the system ID in ISIS to prevent loop. BGP, sorry, EIGRP uses an algorithm called diffusing update algorithm, which has got feasibility condition to prevent loop. Likewise, BGP also got AS number and the router ID to prevent loop between the autonomous system. Within the autonomous system also we run BGP we call that as IBGP. There, the loop is prevented by a rule called BGP or IBGP split horizon rule. More detail is coming later. In short, what I want to say is every routing protocol has got inbuilt loop prevention mechanism. Now, protocols, the routing protocols are many but they don't come under the same category. For example, EIGRP and RIP, if you take, they come under a category called distance vector. OSPF and ISIS come under a category called link state. BGP comes under a category called path vector. Path vector routing protocol, BGP is path vector routing protocol. The reason is it shows the autonomous system via which the package should go, the path. If you see this picture here, the path shown to reach these three networks from here is 64520, which is this one. So it should go this way. 64600, it should go this way, and 64700. That's where the destination is. So it shows the path and the direction. See, in this direction, not this direction. Not this direction. It shows the direction, that's what vector is, and the path. That is why BGP is called as path vector routing. Now, what is the difference between IBG, IGP and BGP? As I said earlier, IGP works within an autonomous system. IGP announces the networks, means advertises the networks, and the metric. If it is RIP, it will advertise hop count. If it is EIGRP, it is going to advertise bandwidth and delay. 
composite value. If it is OSP, if it is going to advertise the link status and the bandwidth based on which the cost is calculated. Likewise, BGP also announces the networks, the paths, Along with that, it advertises attributes. That's very important. BGP works on attributes. BGP you don't use metric. Attributes are similar to metric, but attributes are very, very big than metric. Metric, attribute. They're different. See, metric is like you go to a restaurant and you have a coupon to use burger, buy burger. So you cannot, you cannot buy anything else. So what is the metric? You can buy only burger. One burger, that's the metric. Attribute is like they welcome you to a restaurant as a chief guest, very chief guest. And everything that you see you can have you have multiple choice anything you like you can you can use anything you want to eat you can eat see how big difference it is you are allowed to use only one burger and the other day you are asked to eat anything you see you can see european african uh, Western, America, Asian, all varieties of food in which you are asked to eat only burger. That is metric. You can't eat anything other than that. That's metric. The other day, they, they invite you and everything is available, Asian, European, African, American, all varieties of food. And you're free to use anything you like. Uh, eat anything you like. See how big difference. That big difference is what between the normal metric and the attribute. I may like burger, but today I don't like burger because I see something better than burger in this in this food court. So let me go and pick something else. See, I have an option. Attributes. I can change. Today I can I can go with uh, a, um, a chicken pizza. Tomorrow or after five minutes I may I may choose to eat uh, 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 something else. Right. Rice and chicken. Rice and chicken. Spaghetti. Israel African famous food. Okay, so you may you, you may try something new. Okay, I'm always eating rice and chicken and spaghetti. Let me try something new. Let me go for some European style food. That is attribute. If you are sticking on to only one, I, I I'm I'm used to only rice and rice and chicken. Then you it is like metric, or limited. OSPF or all IGP protocol has got metrics only. You cannot think anything away from metric. If you are taking OSPF, it's only based on cost. You can do some policy based selection. Only based on cost. You don't have any other option. Only cost, cost, cost. But if you have BGP, you got multiple choice. Based on what you need, based on the policy on hand, you can decide. You have multiple choice. So BGP allows administrator to define the policy or a rule for how the data will flow through the autonomous system. So you, you are you're having more flexibility in configuring policies. You will not find this flexibility in other routing protocol. You are more flexible. 
in tuning the routing protocol to meet your policy requirement to match your rules in path selection. Now, in general, path selection will be based on the AS path, AS ops. Sometimes, you know, when you don't set any attributes, when we have multiple paths to reach a destination, the routers are going to decide based on some attribute. There is a hierarchy in 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 picking a best path matching against the hierarchy of attribute but most of the cases you will see path is decided based on the as num number of as number of autonomous systems so you can also call bgp as a hop by hop routing protocol Less of the hop, better is the root. See, this is only when you don't tune the first five attributes. The sixth attribute is shortest AS path. I'm sorry, the fourth attribute is shortest AS path. Only when you don't tune weight and local preference, and it comes to the AS path. So, after local preference only AS, but if you don't tune a, uh, if you don't tune local preference or weight, then it is going to be a tiebreaker. Sorry, yes, please. sorry, uh, the next hop comes before AS before part weight. Or AS next part hop comes before. before weight. Next hop is the very ah, first okay. attribute, zeroth attribute. Okay. Yeah, reachable next stop is the very first attribute. And then comes weight. And then comes local preference. And then comes shortest AS path. And then comes origin. Mm -hmm. That is how it is. So only when we don't configure the attributes like weight and local preference as a tiebreaker, not in all cases. Sometime, you know, you will have multiple paths with same number of hops. So you cannot guarantee that it will be always hop by hop. Sometime, you will see, based on the AS hops, the path will be determined. Now, this page explains uh, now who should not go for BGP and who should go for BGP. If someone has got limited understanding of how to manipulate the path selection using attribute, if, if someone knows only, only to configure BGP, he don't know about attributes, he don't know how to tune attributes, then it's not good for them to go for BGP. Next is when we have only single connection, not dual home or multi home. Then if your router is not big enough to accommodate the huge updates of, of BGP with attributes, then you should not go. These are the three reasons someone should not go for BGP. Now, there are other three reasons why someone should go for BGP. See, you are a service provider, meaning you are a transit between customers. You got multiple connections to multiple autonomous systems. And then you got some routing policies in path selection. So if you have any one of these or all of these or two of these, you must go for BGP. BGP is a TCP based routing protocol, the only TCP based routing protocol. And the reserve port number for BGP is 179. Whenever the change happens, the change is sent as a triggered update immediately and also as an incremental update, meaning only the changes will get attached. Every 60 seconds, the keep alives are sent periodically to maintain the neighborship with those neighbors which is already established. As I said earlier, BGP has got rich metric called attributes. 
And BGP is by design, it is supporting a very huge internet work. There are three types of tables in BGP, neighbor table, which will have the neighbors with whom the three-way handshake was successful and because it's TCP based, no? And, and with whom the BGP session is established. Now, the BGP table is another table. It's like a topology table or a forwarding database where you will have the destinations that you learned via BGP and the attributes attached to each destination. And the routing table will have the best routes for the destination. BGP also have got four different type of messages. Open message is a message that is sent right immediately after the three-way handshake, successful TCP IP three-way handshake. In the open message, the hello timers, sorry, the hold timer, which is 180 second, and the router ID of the routing is sent. BGP also picks the router ID from Lubeck interface, like OSPF. If no Lubeck interface, the biggest IP address from the physical interface. <coughs> now, after establishing the neighbor, keep alive are sent every 60 second. Updates are sent whenever there is a change in the attribute. Notifications are sent whenever there is an error detected in the path which is already there. Right, so in this chapter, what we learned is an introduction to BGP. Why BGP? Why BGP? And what BGP is? BGP is a protocol that uses TCP. BGP has got a lot of attributes. BGP, um, because of the attributes, we can have our own policies in path selection. And it is uh, what BGP is, it uses TCP 179. It's a path vector routing protocol and so on. We also learned who should not go for BGP and who should go for BGP. If you have your autonomous system as a transit autonomous system, or if you have policy in path selection, if you're multi-home, then you should go for BGP. Right, we stop here. Any questions?